Ernie, you know what? Bowling is such a fun sport. I can remember being on a bowling league when I was a teenager. Now, you have a story where bowling and rock and roll really made for a very fun event, and Pacific Ioneer was behind that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, you know, Joyce, it's really interesting because bowling has gone in and out of being popular, you know, over the years. I remember in the 50s, bowling was real popular, and then it went away for a while, and only weird people bowled, and then it came back again and went away and came back. And and so this, you know, we're going back a ways. We're going back to, like, around 1977. And um, we were, as I had mentioned before, we were doing music and album covers as well as corporate work because we always wanted to keep one foot into, you know, it could be, wanted the variety, but it was also like a safety net. If the music business ever dried up, we'd always have that ability to cross over, which a lot of design firms that were around with us, like Hypnosis and other companies like that, Kitty Hawk Graphics, they weren't able to make that change because the music industry went into the dumper for people like us in the 80s. That's when it all kind of blew up. And we needed to have, you know, we were able to make that leap because we had worked on it for years. I was doing it before I even joined Craig Braun or, or, or Pacific Ioneer or any of that. I was already doing work in the corporate world. I was in Madison Avenue. And even when I was working in that agency, I was doing freelance work as well. So I always wanted to keep the variety going. And, and it's funny because music came along during a heavy corporate thing. So it was kind of, but it was always out there teasing and tempting. And, and then all of a sudden I made that change. Rock and bowl. Pacific Ioneer did a lot of really out-of-the-box stuff. We did those buses for the RTD that looked like submarines. We did a, a trade show booth for the Navy League show, which is an, a trade show that you're accompanied by armed guards, and it's all for the government. And Honeywell was our client, and they made a three-ring laser gyro guidance system for nuclear submarines and battleships. And we did a 40 by 20 booth that looked like you were underwater. I mean, it was crazy. We were doing always kind of crazy stuff. And Rock and Bowl was kind of that. We had a client called Active West, and they had uh, 35 bowling alleys in Southern California. And they had a real problem. Leagues were always popular. So they didn't have a problem with leagues at night, and stuff like that. But during the day, uh, especially during the summers, it was like a ghost town because California, you want to be outside. Nobody wants to go inside unless it's an air-conditioned movie theater and maybe not to bowl unless it was real popular at the time. And it, it really wasn't. It was out there, but it wasn't at its height, you know. Uh, so um, our challenge was how do we put people into bowling alleys during the day? And so the target really was pretty obvious. M adults work during the day. Kids, you know, they had summer off, and so that was the perfect target we needed to come up with. And at, at that time, back up just a second, at that time, we had done a couple things with Flo and Eddie with al albums, and we knew them, played on the softball team together and all that. And they rented a space from us, like I had mentioned in the Flo and Eddie segment we did. They rented a space at Pacific Island here, and I'd be, I'd be very honest, it, we're having them in the office every day was like running away and joining the circus. Okay. That's what it was like. Uh, because every day was something different, something crazy, just like they were on stage. You saw them in concert where they throw the dinosaur through the hoop of fire. I mean, they were just nuts like that. That's why they fit so well with Frank Zappa. You know, <laughs> they, he was just as crazy. So anyway, uh, we needed to, so we came up with this concept of rock and bowl. Get a chance to, you got 35 bowling alleys. We build traffic up during the summer months. And then we uh, have a culmination of everything at their major bowling alley. They had like 60 or 70 lanes. So it was huge. And so we, at each bowling alley, you could enter to win. We made floor stands. What you see behind me over here is and I'll send you a, a better image of this, but it's the rock and bowl poster. We did a like a Frazetta kind of thing and got a nice little angle to it. I did this really nice lettering that goes up there, and you know we we tied in with 10Q Radio, which was they got a hundred percent of our target. Okay, they reached a hundred percent of our target, so we promoted heavily 
uh, bought radio time and did the spots. And then we had their DJs come out at the event and they were in the parking lot. We could see, well, there's, you know, Mark, you know, Mark and Alice, and Bernie Toppin and one of the Hudson brothers. And, you know, they, and then 3000 screaming kids in the parking lot. You know, we, we had amazing groups and I'll go into that in a second, but so we needed to somehow, I mean, we knew Alice and we knew, you know, a couple other people, we knew Flo and Eddie and there they were right there in the office, you know, the, you open up the door, the tent's up, and the circuit music starts playing, you know. So we decided that we could hire them to help us acquire all the talent, okay, because you got to really know. I mean, I know Alice, but for me to have – for me to call them up and ask them to do this uh, is ter- completely different, even though there's a respect and a relationship, completely different than Mark and Howard, okay. That's – that's something that they, that's, that's an industry that they're in. They, they feel them. They're, and I told you before, there was a lot of respect from the up-and-coming artists, like Alice, for Mark and Howard, who had been big stars just years earlier, you know. But their, their, their moment in the sun got less and less. But Mark and Howard were able to perpetuate that, even to this day. I mean, they were very, very few are able to do that. But, you know, so we asked them if they would, you know, work with us on this, and they loved it. And over the next, over the next two or three months, we I watched them acquire, you know, get for us talent like Alice and Bernie Toppin, the Babies, REO Speedwagon, Kansas, the Hudson Brothers, uh, you know, and 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 talent like uh, TV people like Levar Burton and all the guys from Barney Miller. And you know, I mean, it was just, and there's a whole bunch of them that I'm leaving out, but you know, we're we're doing a book and in the book is going to be a, this whole segment with all the pictures. Cause I've got to have a hundred pictures of the rock. The, the idea was to enter to win a, a chance to bowl with your favorite rock star or celebrity. Okay. And there was like, I think 68 lanes or something. So we had teams and you could win to be on the team to, you know, to bowl with that person. And it was amazing. We, you know, we, and there were also a lot of little, uh, little traps because one of the things that we didn't understand and, and even the, the guys that own Active West didn't get that the summer months, the managers and the people that worked in the bowling alley saw those summer months during the day as their chance to kind of kick back and take it easy. The last thing they wanted to have happen in there was having a lot of kids bowling and, it, and you know causing work for them. So we didn't realize that, and they didn't tell us, and I don't think they really knew, but early on, I mean, we take we did floor stands, you know, big floor stand, like when you go into a theater, you'd see that graphic that's over there behind me uh, there, and it would be a floor stand, and it would have, like, some of the groups, and it was the tear-off coupon that you entered to win, and they would take them, and we'd deliver them and set them up, and then we'd go back a week or so later, and it was gone. They took it and put it away. Because we would get people calling the radio station going, hey, I was just in Buena Vista at their bowling alley, and I didn't see anything about this. So so kids were calling into the radio station. It was was amazing. And the radio spots that we did with Flo and Eddie talking about, hey, we're going to have all these people. I'm telling you, there were at least 3,000 people in the parking lot. It was unbelievable. And, you know, there's – I have a picture of the, uh, the VIP pass right there to the rock and bowl, and you can see that lettering I did. You can't see it that well on this the floor stand and the poster because it's not a really good re- representation. You know, I need to shoot all these images in high resolution, but the, there's enough to see, especially when you're not, you haven't got somebody like me sitting in front of it. You know, my mom used to tell me all the time I made a better door than a window. And, uh, you know... <laughs> So, but so, you know, and so watching them and how they did it, I mean, they would, you know, they would call the ones that they knew they could get first. Okay. They knew they could get Alice. They knew they could get Bernie Toppin. They knew that they could get, I think uh, Mark was friends with the lead singer of REO Speedwagon. So they started there and, you know, we had to do it months in advance because a lot of these guys were in the recording studio. They weren't in town. They had to be in Los Angeles area. So it isn't like we could go get somebody that lived in New York and fly them in. There was no budget to do that. This was a charity thing. We raised $50,000 for 
for the California Special Olympics. So, you know, it was really a very successful thing. And in fact, the next two or three years after we did this, the radio station kept doing it. They kept doing the same thing, calling it rock and roll. They didn't use our graphics and stuff, but rock and roll was a big thing. And they did it during the summer. So I think probably what happened was after we did it, maybe their salespeople from the radio station went and pitched <laughs> Active West to go around us and we could do it. We could do it all for you, no problem. You know, that's that's one of the other things about this business. You know, you're you're always looking over your shoulder, you know, really, because a lot of times and you know, this goes back to what we talked about originally, when you're friends with your clients, you know, and have a, more than just a business, you know, vendor, you know, client relationship, it really helps that all be much easier, much smoother. We had, uh, at that time, we had Alltech Lansing. We had a couple other, and all our clients got to come and they and be spectators, and then they got the VIP pass that you see back there. You know, and there was a lot of other stuff that we did, the, the tear-off thing that you entered with and put in the draw to win, and, and then the radio things that we were doing, the radio spots with the DJs, and some with and some without, some with our guys. So it was really kind of, it was an interesting experience to see how they did it, how they leveraged, because they'd get the ones they wanted, they knew they could get, and then they'd call up ones that were like the long shot and go, well, you know, we got Alice coming, and, you know, Bernie Toppin's going to be there, and, you know, the guys from, you know, uh, the Babies, and at that moment, the Babies were huge. I mean, they were a big band, and so, because that whole punk thing was starting to happen, you know, and Alice was you know, really big Bernie Toppin, of course, with, you know, Elton John, but, you know, everybody had a great time, you know, it was really wonderful. The whole thing, like I said, culminated this, like, it was like Mecca for bowlers, you know, I mean, it was like bowler heaven, this bowling alley that was just immense. And, you know, like I said, we, we filled the parking lot, you know, with all these screaming kids that, you know, and it's, and then we had like the, the, the limos would pull up or the cars would pull up and the, oh, yeah. you know, the rock stars <laughs> would get out and go in and, and they're all, you know, it was just like a uh, Hollywood premiere, you know, or something. It was very exciting. And again, you know, Mark and Howard, I can't, I can't talk enough about how wonderful they really are, you know, and I think about them all the time. And after we did our first segment, I, you know, it, it was just, I went out and saw a bunch of stuff and, you know, got some of these images. Like I said, I probably have a hundred of those photos of the different groups because each group w with their star got photographed and, you know, we, we did a whole thing and, and posted them up in the bowling alleys. I mean, it was very, very cool, you know? And, and so it, again, Pacific Ioneer wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. And there's a difference between imitation and creation. They sound the same, but they're not. You know, and I'm not saying that everything that I've ever done is I've, I've created it. We've talked about this before. I've created it from nothing. I'm influenced by everything, by my wife, by this, by us doing this show, by yeah. you. You know, everything around me, you know, is an influence. And for me, it, we talked about this like a love affair. You know, I don't have children, but these are my children. And I'm at a point now in my life where I'm saying to clients that push the envelope, and become too much like a client, not interested, just not interested in doing that. It just doesn't, it's not fulfilling. It's frustrating, you know, and why go there, you know? Yeah, so I respect better. you very much for that. You know, you know what is, Ernie? I am looking at the picture. What is really striking me is the picture of all the kids smiling. And with this particular uh, rock and bowl that that uh, was done you created memories for people because i'm a bit of a sentimental fool if i'm at an event like this i save the ticket stub it's yeah, in my sure. scrapbook and yeah. i would venture to say that somebody who participated in that as a teenager that was a memory for them oh and in a group too because we you know even though we never did anything for kansas or reo Speedwagon, i mean if meeting them hanging out with them they knew who we were. We knew who they were. And it was, that was just, an, I mean, it was great. The real friends come back and say, I love you for what you do. Can you help me with this? And that's a whole nother level of friendship, you know, but just being able to meet them. Cause again, I'm a huge fan. So for me, it was like, Oh my God. And Flo and Eddie put it all together, you know, because they knew everybody, you know, I mean, it's just, 
pretty crazy watching them work every day. And like I said, it was like being in the circus. You never knew what was going to happen the next day. You put up the tent, turn on the lights, the music starts playing, and there's Flo and Eddie, you know, throwing a di- stuffed toy dinosaur through a poop of fire, you know, <laughs> every day. They are too much. I just, yeah. you know, even in those early days, they had fun. They yeah. had fun back in 1966 when I saw them and remember sure. them. Yeah, they were, they were just, and again, to know them, and, to know them is one thing. To know them and do an album cover with them, with them is another level. And then to work with them, even though I'm not a musician and I don't write lyrics and I don't know, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, you know, there was this mutual respect and that we were able to communicate on that level of, hey, you know, here's what we need and how can you help us? And, okay, well, here's what you guys need to do to help us and help you. You know, and that interaction, uh, I never really had that, that tight of relationship in a project that wasn't, you know, an album cover. I've had those with album covers with Alice and other bands, but this was the first time we mixed corporate and music, like you said in the beginning of the show, we put corporate and music together and made it work. People yeah. loved it. And you're right, all those kids, I mean, I'm sure they remember that event, whether they were on a team or in the parking lot screaming and yelling, they remember when they saw Alice Cooper with Bernie Toppin and one of the Hudson brothers and REO Speedwagon in Kansas. And, you know, LeVar Burton was huge. You know, he had just done Roots and he was huge. And then the guys from Barney Miller, they were great. You know, and then I told you last time I was able to reconnect with Wojowicz uh, at Kenny Rankin's wed- one of Kenny's weddings. You know, and and by the way, that thank you so much for you know bringing Kenny into the sunlight. You know, because Kenny deserves to be in that sunlight. The guy is just amazing. You know, absolute thank- honor. Oh, thank you for doing that. You know, and I'm sure you know. I'm like Joan Soda. I don't know whether you're familiar with Joan Soda, but they, they, they've tried to be bought by major corporations. They have a great soda drink. And, they, and the guy who owns it hates all the big corporations. And he said, you know, I, I get my consumers one at a time. That's all I care about. I don't care about the masses. Because if I can get one, that one will tell two. Those two will tell mm-hmm. four. And exponentially, it just grows. It's a slower way of doing it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a stronger way of building. I mean, you're going to build a building on quicksand or you can put it on solid ground with rebar and the whole thing and really make it sturdy. A lot of times today, you know, especially today, there's too much rushing. And, I agree. And not, you know, just get it out there, get it done. Maybe somebody will buy it. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I sell, I tell people all the time, I sell, people ask me what I do. I say, I sell stuff that people really don't need. That's what I do, you know, and that's why I enjoy music so much because people want the music. They enjoy the music. It makes them feel good. It makes me feel good to be part of that. You know, if I can, you know, embed a memory in you or them that will automatically bring the image up in your head along with the music and how the song goes, that's, that's something. That's it really sure is. It sure is. I got a challenge for you, Ernie. What oh, song? Oh. I want to hear what song you're you're thinking well, about. I'm, I, I'll 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 tell you. Um, the, I I I vacillated. Okay, that's okay. Uh, Babies, back on my feet again. It's a good uh, one. A really great song. Um, and then let's see. I have one other. What is the other one? Oh. Uh, Oh, for Kansas, Dust in the Wind, which was always one of my favorites. For REO Speedwag, Keep On, uh, keep on Loving You. Uh, oh. I love that song and the story behind it. But I know we're talking about a Beatles song. So, I mean, I'm sorry, a Turtles song, because that's really what this is about. So I would pick Eleanor. Ooh, you know, yes. And Lincoln would, I mean, Burton Cummings would always bust me for picking the low-hanging fruit, but I don't think Howard has ever sounded so good as on that song. I mean, they, they were just amazing together. And so any of those, but definitely, you know, Eleanor would be my choice. And I'm going to, I'm going to go along with you. They're going to pick Eleanor and Jay and the techniques. Keep the ball rolling. Oh, all right. That okay. was a big thing. Baltimoreans. I'm, I'm from Baltimore. We <laughs> love the bowl. We love bowling, hon. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, <laughs> and, and that was a big song that uh, they had a bowling sure. show on television. Uh, and and keep the ball rolling was one of the. That's the, great. That's a great song. I love it. Yeah. So great. You know. I mean, and 
again, thank you so much for, you know, letting me be on the corner here. And I'm, I'm a good lookout. I can see what's coming, you know, and I'll tell you, next time is going to be even better than this time. And we talked about it. This is our 21st show together. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. And you know what? There's going to be twice as many more. Uh, we've got a yes. million stories and a million things. And, uh, you know, and we already have, Joyce and I have already planned something for next week. So, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, okay. it's all good. Ernie, thank you so much. We love you. You are our lighthouse. Oh, well, thank you so much, Joyce. And believe me, I, I enjoy being here and I enjoy throwing a little light on stuff.